as if you didn't have more things to complicate your life, we have the ultimate the open, fold it flip up down. Oh man. <laughs> From the flight test, I'm Josh, and I'm Eric, and uh, we got a great opportunity, especially with this cold weather, to go down south and grab some content because we don't want to film in the snow. It's not much fun. It's not much fun at all. But the best part about it was meeting some amazing individuals, and one of the amazing individuals we got to meet was Joshua Finn. The neat thing about Joshua is he covers something we never done before, which is free flight. Yeah, he talked to us about the F1D, which were yep. the super fragile, you know, real slow flyers, and then he took us upstairs, and he had this room full of models, and I. I mean, there was Over probably 130. Yeah, 130 or something like that. And it's going to be converted soon because his wonderful wife is going to have a baby. That's right. So I don't know where you're going to put your models, but not above the baby because <laughs> they're very fragile. So he took out these airplanes that were free flight, but they were rocket powered and yes. they looked so fragile and they were made of balsa wood. And he, he pulled this thing out and it just literally unformed or unfolded like yeah. a transformer. It was amazing. It was amazing. So we have over a hundred model airplanes in here. Of course, some of them are downstairs, so it may have dropped below a hundred for the moment. Yeah, um, and they're all of various shapes and sizes, it looks like. That's too. exactly right. So, so what is this thing you have in your hand? This right is a rocket glider. Rocket glide defines that it stays intact throughout the flight. So it fires up vertically off your launch equipment and the ejection charge shoves the nose cone forward and out come the wings. <laughs> That is awesome. And of course, we come in um, larger oh, got, sizes. Wow. The ultimate the open, fold it flip up down. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do you have plans for these things? Unfortunately, I do not. So you just like build these right out of your head. This one actually was. It was It was a flow. It, it came together as it progressed. That is, that this, is this amazing. This folds under. The wing tips fold under and it slides back Hang on a second, like so. What size rockets do you use? This one, I would not go above an A engine because you'd probably strip things off if you went any farther. That's of course, amazing. I've got this tension spring uh, string that here to, it to hold it. When that nose cone slides forward, that little pin releases and out it all comes. That, and I could watch that like 10 times. Oh, that's amazing. And, and so the actual, the, the reverse, what normally pops a parachute, pops that nose forward and right. releases it. And of course the nose is retained on these wire rails. So you're not losing it. Exactly. Better keep rebuilding it. That's right. Wow. This is the same concept. Um, so then how high is that when those wings deploy? Depending on whether I put an A engine in there, it might be 150 feet. Okay. Uh, C engine with piston launcher and so on, I can be pushing up into the six, 700 foot range. Oh my goodness. So then when so, that comes out, you're going to the next zip code to find it. That's right. <laughs> so are you going to launch one of these later today too? We are going to do our level best to put up oh, that's some launches. Great. Remember, with these, every flight is a test flight. This is an Estes A83 engine, just like what you would buy at Walmart. So that side of things is very straightforward and simple. What's less simple is the fact that we're flying a somewhat heavier aircraft and we want to get all the power we can at launch. So inside here, there is a sliding piston on top of this carbon rod that's going to slide inside this tube. The whole unit's going to lift upward when that piston hits the back here because there's a little collar that prevents it from coming out. The tube will pressurize and pop the rocket loose. So you're going to basically set this thing off and shoot it up and in the second that that reverse cap blows, the wings are popping out and it's a That's flight. exactly right. So who is this? This is my wife, Hope. Okay. She builds Hi, with Hope. me as well. She is going to be our firing expert today. You're going to be lighting this thing up. Yes. Awesome. You're excited about this too. I am. <laughs> and this thing looks like a work of art and you're putting a rocket on it and shooting up in the air with no control. That's exactly right. I like <laughs> that's it. That's the fun of it. <laughs> Let's that's, see this. That's the adventure of free flight. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go. Range and skies are clear. We have continuity going in five, four, three, two, one. That is so stinking cool. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>
That's back. awesome. All right, pull that key loose. I got a plane to right. Right. All I have to do is load in another one of these guys, uh, stick it on the piston, it off raining. we go. This is the same concept, only smaller. It is a, uh, what's called a Micromax motor. We have continuity going in five, four, three, two, one. about the same size as a bottle rocket. It has a similar amount of fuel, but it has probably four or five times the thrust, and it has it for longer. So it's putting out about a pound and a half of peak thrust, and as a result, you've got a, an aircraft that weighs somewhere on the order of a 50th to a 100th of a pound, so the acceleration is extremely high. I mean, it's just like hitting it with a sledgehammer. So it gets way up there for just a tiny, tiny little engine. Stab you with the pole here. No damage, uh, a little bit of junk from the, the trees and some exhaust fumes, but I mean, it's ready to go again. It's the Flying Aces Moth. It was published in Flying Aces Magazine. 1938. I think it was Herb Spatz that designed it. Built from the heck kit. Josh, what do you you keep pulling stuff out of your car, man? What is this? This is an exact scale replica of the Howard Hughes Spruce Goose. He preferred it called the Hercules. The Hercules. Now, here's a funny thing. We don't have electric motors on this. These are all wound with rubber bands. How long did it take you to wind these? Uh, we just spent about five minutes five winding minutes. it up here. Uh, it's not wound up all the way, so it's just gonna make a, a gentle circuit around okay. the field. Since you don't have 10 arms, you have this contraption, right? That's exactly right. And what I'm gonna do, this the center section is a grip. Okay. So when I'm ready to fly it, I'm gonna raise it up over my head, pull this guy loose, and let it go. slide it into the air. Are you gonna do it now? I am gonna do it now. Let's see it. All right. Spruce Goose, like what an amazing <laughs> airplane. I was like, when he was getting this thing out yeah. of the car, I could not wait to see how he was gonna wind up eight motors on this. And he had like this styrofoam oh. block that he put down yeah. and it held each one. And, and he had to wind each motor individually to yeah. the proper amount because if one was off, it would, you it know. Would, you torque it yeah. or yeah. To put that much work into something that you can't control. That's, sure. a, that's a level of trust and a passion on building because if you can't control it, you're probably gonna be building a lot more. A lot more, and he's an engineer too. So yes. he's got a background in, in that kind of thing. And, yeah. <laughs> and to see his rocket powered gliders go off, how he just, you know, they shot up, but also how they had transformed. I'm inspired to do a swing wing foamy of some sort just yeah. as a novelty and uh, see how that goes out. But also to see the when his wonderful wife Hope and him doing the hobby together. Yeah, that was so special. cool. Yeah, I when I built, uh, when my wife and I got together, I kind of did the same thing. I built yeah. this little airplane for her and that was one of our dates when we first got started was I was, you know, 
rubber band powered <laughs> airplane in the field and she thought I was a geek and she yeah. still does, so. It was a very special thing. There's a saying, a family that plays together stays together. It was really a breath of fresh air to see that wonderful couple, the little baby coming to be, yep. enjoying this great hobby. But we also did an episode on, I'm gonna butcher the name, F1D. It's basically the uh, free flights that are made out of super thin balsa that are rolled together and you can see the props. And these rubber band planes fly up to 30 minutes at a time. That's longer than a lipo-powered yeah. airplane. I mean, we're struggling to get 15 sometimes or oh. 20. And, and one thing's for sure is we don't know the first thing about them, so Joshua is kind enough to sit down with us yeah. and share a whole bunch of details at it. Look for that video soon. All right, well, we want to thank you guys for watching, and it was so nice of them to invite us into their homes and, you know, show the, you know, show us all what they do, oh, and yeah. it was just a fantastic experience. And, and we've been blessed. Uh, in the past uh, week on that road trip, we got to experience everything from full-scale to rubber band-powered airplanes. If there's some aspect of flight that you want us to explore, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we love flight. We want to see everything that flies. Even if it's not our skill set, we'll find people that do have that and bring it to you. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time.